correction is very easy to do. It's just very time consuming, especially if you want to get that cinematic look. First of all, let's talk about that you have to get your shot right in order to look cinematic. You can never fix a bad shot. If you've got overexposed bits and underexposed bits, it's not going to look cinematic because cinematic shots are always in perfect exposure. Try and remove sharp shadows off your subject unless that's what you're trying to go for. Always try and add a bit of diffusion over your subjects and that will help add that cinematic look. Only if that's not what you're going for, if you want those harsh shadows, then go for it. Within this shot, I am very blended in with the background and there's not really much colour contrast or contrast in the image. So, how do you get that cinematic look? Well, you want to make sure your eye is drawn to whatever you want to. In this case, this is me, my subject. It could be an object for you. So, how do we do this? Well, we want to separate me from the background. But first, let's do some basic correction by increasing that contrast, bring some highlights down, and basically getting the exposure perfect within the shot. Once you've got that, it should look a lot better, but you can do a lot more to it. Make sure you do your exposure first, then go on to your highlights, then you go on to your whites, then you do your shadows, then you do your blacks, and then you do your contrast. Keep doing it in that order until you've got your image just right. Then you want to move on to saturation. Adjust your saturation by increasing or decreasing your saturation, depending on what you want to do. In this case, I'm going to increase the saturation ever so slightly. Then you want to adjust your white balance. In this case, it doesn't need much tweaking, but I'm just going to make it ever so slightly warmer. Then you want to click on your clip, click Control or Command, click and drag and put that layer above that layer. Then you should have two copies of the exact same layer. Then you want to go onto the Opacity tab under Image Settings. You don't want to click on the Pen tool or the Eclipse tool and draw around your subject or whatever you want your audience to see. Remember, it doesn't have to be too accurate because we're going to increase the featherness of that mask. You want to track that mask. Click on the arrow and Premiere Pro should check that mask. If it does slip, pause the mask, delete those keyframes, readjust the mask and play again. If it keeps slipping, you might have to do it manually. No need to do it frame by frame because it needs to be too accurate. Go over a couple frames, then try and run the track again. If you're still failing, do the rest of the clip manually. Now turning these layers on and off, notice we've separated the subject from the background. This allows us to add colour contrast to the image. You now want to increase the contrast a bit more on that second layer of what your subject is. You also want to bring the brightness up. Do not overdo this otherwise you'll get a weird haloing effect over your model or subject. Little bits. Your aim here is to make that make your subject slightly brighter than the background. Now go back onto the mask you made and increase that featherness a lot. Probably from 200 to 100 will do. Varying on your clip will vary on how you're going to do this mask. So play around until you get the best look. Remember, don't overdo it, otherwise you will get this haloing around it. Now you'll see that your subject is more away from the background. If you go back onto the first clip and add a little bit of blue into the background and darken it a bit more, you'll notice the subject will actually pop out a little bit more. Now you've done this, it should actually look really good, but there's even more we're going to do to it. This time, we're going to only select the skin tones. So do the exact same thing, click Control click, want to duplicate that layer and do the skin tones again by drawing the mask and tracking it. Make sure you delete the mask off the other layer, otherwise this won't work. With that new mask around the skin, you want to track it again, remember if it slips, readjust the mask and play it again. I like to increase the warmness ever so slightly of the skin tones, and this adds a very nice warmth to the actual skin of the person. In my clip, I've got a very red face. That's because it was very cold, so I wanted to go in, so I wanted to bring down the reds in my face. Click all the colours at the bottom and drag down the reds ever so slightly. Didn't want to overdo it, otherwise my skin would look really odd, just ever so slightly to bring that redness down. Now looking back at the image, it looks very, very good. Now let's add an overall look to this image. First of all, I want to create an adjustment layer. You can do this by right clicking in your bin, clicking new adjustment layer, or you can click the new icon and do the exact same thing, creating a new adjustment layer. Make sure your settings match your secret settings, otherwise you'll get a weird effect. Now go back into creative and you'll see this window where you can adjust some looks. Click on those arrows until you see one you like, or you can download one of the internet. Not all looks look really good when they're really intense, so it might have to bring it down. So once you've selected your look, look click on the window or, or click on the name from that drop down list, you'll see a slider where you can bring down the intensity of that look. Usually around 20% does it quite nicely, but depending on your clip and depending on your look, will vary on what you actually want to do. Now it's time just to do some fine adjustments. Go back onto each layer, and adjust any settings if necessary until it looks really nice. Now you've got loads of layers, but you don't really want loads of layers because it's going to crowd up your timeline. So select all the layers that you just did all that masking and adjusting on, right click and click Nest, 
and it'll nest it into one. But you can always still adjust those settings, double click on that nest, and it'll open up a new sequence, and you'll see that you've got all your settings that you just changed, and it'll automatically update with the new of the sequence. So you never lose any settings, it's just a way to keep your timeline nice and neat. Remember this takes a lot of time to do, so it's not necessary on every single shot, or every single project. Getting good at colour correction is very hard, so it's a lot of practicing, and I admit I'm not the best at colour correction either. So a lot of practicing, and keep practicing all the time, filming stuff, colour correcting old videos you've done, to try and refine those skills as best as you can, because you're going to always be learning. Thank you for watching, if you liked the video, give it a like. If not, give it a dislike. If you want to be notified whenever I upload, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.